welcome back to Nintendo Prime for a special Sunday video. Now, this video is dealing with some rumors. We can call them rumors. Some people call them leaks. I don't really consider anything that's completely unverifiable to be a leak, although I know it kind of loses its meaning. It's whatever. I want to remind you that uh, we are giving away a, a Nintendo Switch OLED a PlayStation 5 or an Xbox Series X. It will be a current console of choice to one lucky winner. Just go check out the Gleam.io link down in the pinned comment and the description. And if this is your first time at the channel, why don't you drop a like and subscribe. All right, we're talking about Breath of the Wild 2 rumors here, and yes, they come from 4chan. So if you want to click off because of that, it's cool, I get it. I don't hold it against you, but I do think these rumors are interesting just because they, they present some semi-believable information. We do get legit you know, information off of 4chan here and there. I'm not gonna sit here and pretend that it's even remotely close to even 50%. Uh, but you know, when something comes across that feels believable, we'll talk about it. I also wanna know before we talk about these rumors that you know what, stuff from Zelda basically hardly ever leaks. It's pretty rare, especially before there's gonna be a major showing of the game. But this does come from a 4chan user that claims to have played it. Maybe they're part of the testing team. Usually if there is going to be leaks, it would come from the QA testers. Uh, so I guess let's just go through these rumors. Uh, it was all collected up by a user over on Reddit, so we'll go over the Reddit post here. And screw it, here's some footage, and let's just read these rumors. All right. Reason that the Master Sword uh, is not with Link is that it was returned to the Korok Forest, which is now floating in the sky. The game difficulty is about the same. It's not really harder or easier than Breath of the Wild. More traditional dungeons, as well as replacements for shrines, which are even older runes located all over the world. Setup is just like the first game. However, there's actually a more dramatic introduction to the game. Uh, mostly the same enemies with some evolutions and the music is still simple, but for some reason sounds out of tune. There are new underground enemies that can play around with time mechanics. I find that to be interesting. Items still have the same durability, but there are some enemies that have a time reversal mechanic that ends up with your weapon healing each time you strike them. The plot revolves around time manipulation and another dimension. We've actually seen this in Zelda before. We've seen time manipulation and other dimensions. So I guess that's not really a new concept. The green arm is a motif for courage. The arm is the last power from a sage that gives you new mechanics. And I find that to be rather interesting. I think all of us felt like the arm is something you get early game and replaces maybe the Sheikah Slate. So kind of interesting. Zelda plays a role in character swap mechanics. She's in another dimension and you have to switch characters for puzzles to influence the regular Hyrule overworld and vice versa. Lots of teamwork between Link and Zelda. Also Link has, or Zelda has, the Sheikah Slate. No real combat for her from what was played, mostly stealth and puzzle solving for Zelda. No gear, inventory, just materials and quests. I, th this is obviously interesting because the Sheikah Slate abilities aren't with Link, at least we haven't seen them in the trailers. We haven't even seen him with the Sheikah Slate. And the Sheikah Slate was originally Zelda's, so it would make sense that she has it. And that there's some sort of um, play between the two. Uh, it's been hinted at, but never really, you know, thrown in there. Obviously, you know, we, we've had games in the past play around with Zelda being partially playable, things like Spirit Tracks. But yeah, I, I think this is going to be a rather interesting change, assuming that any of this is actually true. All right. Link only uses the new powers from the Sages, while Zelda uses Slate features from Breath of the Wild 1. Lots of Ocarina of Time references. I mean, I guess if you have time manipulation, it's hard not to reference one of the biggest time manipulation games in the series. Um, identity of the lead sage should satisfy you, whatever that means. We, we, we obviously have no idea. Also, there's a surrealist tone and kill the past story about champions taking the place as new sages with more traditional Link, Ganon, and Zelda plot, which I think, you know, the champions becoming sages is a fairly common presumption uh, because the champions really seem to fill the role of sages just in a more interactive way in the original game. So it would it would make sense if they were actually becoming sages or did become sages. But again, all, I don't know, they're called speculation. I, you know, this cl person claims they'll play the game. So there are six total dungeons, which is probably a decent amount. I mean, I know some people want to see like nine, like Twilight Princess or something, but you know, six along with, you know, sh you know things that replace shrines. I, I think that's, I think that's going to be plenty. Um, especially if they're really massive, like the old dungeons used to be. 
Uh, let's see, it takes place immediately after Breath of the Wild 1, which that shouldn't surprise anyone. Never saw Ganon, but from what he saw, he can understand that the undead form of Ganon is invincible. And Link and Zelda have to work to restore Ganon's physical form to be able to injure him. Which I find interesting, because if he's undead and you can't harm him, but you're going to restore him to a physical state so you can harm him, won't that just make him undead again? Which means you can't harm him. Seems like a catch-22. It'd be very interesting to see how they handle that in the plot. Um, yeah, maybe you don't kill him. Maybe you just need him back in the physical form so you could reseal him. I, I don't know. There's going to be some interesting um, things there. And let's not pretend that there's never been plot holes in the Zelda series before. Um, Bolson dies and now is a ghost who gives hints like Cass from Breath of the Wild 1. Very interesting. And when asked to list three things that weren't in the trailers, he replies, there's a land mola that are like the size of the two horses that burrow between sky islands, double sword weapons, and a power that both slows time and speeds up Link. So that's very interesting. Obviously, um, all of this stuff sounds extremely plausible and possible, uh, but isn't even going to end up being true. I mean, if it's just guesses, well, I mean, any sort of, you know, any part of this guess could end up being correct. If it is someone who's actually been QA testing the game, which they do have QA testers all over the world, not just local in Japan, especially if the game's coming out this year, there's going to be a lot of QA testing going on right now if it's actually coming out this year. Um, yeah, it's possible to see leaks like this, and 4chan is probably the only place you would see a QA tester possibly leak anything because it's impossible to track. That's the one neat thing about 4chan and why we do sometimes get some legitimate massive things leaked at 4chan is because it's impossible to backtrack a user on 4chan. Everyone is anonymous. There's no IPs logged, nothing. It's, it, it, it's a very much the safest place to leak things without getting busted. That being said, obviously if this stuff is true, there'd probably be an internal investigation from Nintendo to try to see who's been on 4chan. Uh, but you know, if they're smart, they were doing this from a separate computer in their home that Nintendo can't touch. All I know is this is really, really interesting uh, to just think about if this is true. Again, I can't sit here and be like, you should believe this i mean get your tinfoil hats on throw the salt over your shoulder and be skeptical as hell but also it's completely okay to just imagine the possibilities you know i think of a possibility like zelda actually being playable and needing to work together between two different dimensions what the heck dimension is zelda in what is going on there? There's new enemies in the underground area. What are those new enemies? You know, what about the sky? We saw new enemies in the sky, but that was also in the trailers. So maybe that's why he wasn't talking. It's going to be really, really interesting because he didn't really provide an explanation for why things are in the sky, right? I think that's probably one of the questions I would have had is, hey, why are we in the sky in the first place? Okay, so the Master Sword was put back and that somehow raised, you know, the Lost Woods or whatever up into the sky. Fine, but why are things in the sky? Maybe that's something this person doesn't know yet because that could be a late game thing. As he said, he hasn't actually ran in to Ganon or Ganondorf at this point, uh, but the plot line does revolve around it. Um, as he says, a traditional, um, you know, Zelda plot line of, of Zelda Link and Ganon, which I mean, I don't really, I mean, Breath of the Wild was sort of a traditional plot line so much in that it was Zelda Link and Ganon as well. Just Beast Ganon, Calamity Ganon, whatever, I don't know. So it'll be really interesting to see uh, what happens there, or if he just meant Ganondorf. Um, I don't know. This this looks so cool. Like, I agree at times, not my favorite Zelda game, but I do like a lot of the elements that are in that game. I'd like to see them. I think a lot of longtime Zelda fans would really appreciate that. And things like the game difficulty being about the same is, I think, just right. I think the game difficulty in Breath of the Wild was perfect as is, although it would be see cool to see the master mode included without needing to buy DLC, like unlocked when you beat the game, or, you know, in my opinion, just available from the very beginning because it's a difficulty setting, so why not just let us have it? But, you know, that's neither here nor there. I, I do like this. The game obviously has been in development for a very long time, just as long as Breath of the Wild without the need to build an engine or an art style. So without the need to build an art style or an engine, I'm very curious how much they put into this. Obviously, we have to realize there was a pandemic and that could have caused some delays as well. But man, I'm really, really excited for this. I hope that there's some truth to this just because it's so exciting to fundamentally talk about. But also, it's nice to know nothing, which really feels like that's what we know about Breath of the Wild 2 at this point. Link's in the sky. He's got a shiny arm. He's got some new powers. 
And that's about it. Everything else has been speculations because Nintendo's been very good. We don't even have the title. Like I'd be very curious, does this person know the title? Or maybe the QA testers don't because the demos don't have a title. They're just calling it the sequel to Breath of the Wild or Breath of the Wild 2 or whatever. I, I, I'm very curious um, how this is all coming together and if any of this is true. And if this is true, this does mean there is a QA tester leaking things, which means we should find out much more information later this year as they get to test more parts of the game. Because if you didn't know, QA testers get to play through the entire game. But they play it in chunks and segments as development's going. And right now, if they're in the home stretch, I would imagine this QA tester is going to get to play all the way to the end, probably at some point this summer. Anyways, folks, I am Nathaniel Rubblejance from Nintendo Prime. It's been a lot of fun dropping a nice Zelda rumor video on the weekend. Gotta love it. Now, if you don't mind me, I need to go get back to, you know, Pokemon Legends Arceus because that game's out right now. We don't need rumors for that. It's amazing. It's fun. And for my money, the best Pokemon game I've played in my entire life. And I mean that. And I haven't even beat it yet. All right, folks. Catch you in the next video.